Hello everyone, my name is Dave, and this is part six of a video series where I'm gonna show you how to create a tower-based defense game 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. In the last video, I started working on the turrets and set up some code that draws them and allows them to rotate, as well as be placed anywhere in the level. In this part, I'm going to improve the turrets so that they can target enemy units. Let's start by thinking about the requirements. The targeting system will require a turret to store a reference, such as a pointer, to a unit on list units. Currently, if units are added or removed from list units, pointers will become invalidated. Therefore, list units and some other code will need to be modified to fix this. Next, a targeting system needs to be set up that prioritizes an enemy unit to be selected out of all the many enemy units in the game. Finally, once a target is selected, there needs to be code for the turret that will be able to rotate and point towards it. The list of units is stored in the game class, and each unit is only accessed directly through that list. There's no situation where a reference, such as a pointer to one, needs to be stored. However, now that each turret will need to store some kind of a reference to its target unit, there needs to be a way to do this. There's a few ways that we could try to achieve this. For example, by using a raw pointer, an iterator, or an integer to store the index on list units. Clearly, all those methods are essentially a pointer to a unit on the list. However, the problem with all those methods is that as units are added or removed from list units, they will become invalidated and no longer point to the correct unit or location in memory. This would have disastrous consequences. We could try to have a system that will update every one of them every time a unit is added or removed, but that will get ugly and complicating very fast. There is a solution to this, however, smart pointers. There are of course three main kinds of smart pointers, unique, as well as shared and weak. Of course, unique is used when there is only one reference to the pointer, and a combination of shared and weak are used when there is more than one reference. Obviously, in this case, there is more than one reference, therefore I will convert list units to use shared pointers. You can see that this has caused a bunch of errors in the game class, so I'm going to fix them. I'm going to start by creating a new function called updateUnits that will replace the code that was there because it's about to get a bit longer and more complicating, and I feel that it will be clearer this way. It's very similar to what was there before, but I added a no pointer check and a Boolean variable that determines whether or not the iterator needs to be incremented or not, rather than have the code that increments them in multiple places, and a few comments to try and make it clearer what everything does. I'm going to add this function in the header, of course. I'm going to need to modify the code in the unit class for the update function to reference the modified list in the header and CPP file. The code that checks for overlap with the other units will need to be modified to have a null pointer check, as well as switch the code when, for example, calling functions, since it's a pointer now. An update is required to the code for the draw function in the game class as well. Similarly, for the function that adds a unit. Okay, that should be it for now. I'm just gonna quickly run the game and make sure that it builds and nothing goes crazy. Okay, very nice, everything's working. Now that all those updates to the code have been made, it means that we can start working on the code for the turret that actually finds a target enemy unit. I'm going to set it up so that they pick the one that's closest to them and within range. However, you could always modify the code to prioritize them in a different way if you want. In addition, if their target moves far enough away or reaches the center of the base, then a new one is found instead. I'm going to create a function called findEnemyUnit for the turret class that will return a weak pointer 
to the closest enemy unit that can be found, which means I'm going to have to include memory in the unit class as well. I'm going to start by creating a variable for the closest unit and a variable that stores its distance from this turret. I'm going to then start looping through the list and ensure that the selected unit isn't a null pointer. If that's the case, then I'm going to calculate the distance between them. I'm then going to check if the unit is within range and no closest unit has been found or the selected unit is closer than the previous closest unit. If that's the case, then the closest unit will become the selected unit. Finally, I'm going to return the closest unit. At this point, you'll notice a few problems with the code. A function called getPose is called to get the position of the unit. However, it doesn't exist yet. Therefore, I'm going to add it. All it does is output the unit's position. The turret also has a variable called weapon range which means that it will need to be added in the header and at the top of the CPP file. I'm going to set it to be five tiles. Of course, you could set it to be whatever you like though. The find enemy unit function that was just created will need to be called in the update function. Let's keep the code simple to start. I'm going to create a variable called unit target that will be set to the output of the find enemy unit function. This means that the list of units will need to be added as an input to the update function. It also needs to be added to the game class where the update function is called. At this point, the code is pretty much ready for testing, but I'm just going to add a little bit in the turrets update function to check if a target enemy unit has been found or not. Let's run the game and see what happens. When the unit starts spawning, they're not close enough, so the breakpoint isn't triggered. However, as soon as one gets close enough, it does get triggered. Very nice. Let's do something a bit more useful with this. I'm going to set up some code that will allow the turret to rotate and point towards its target if it has one. This means that I'm going to create a variable called unit target in the turret's header and modify the code in the CPP file to set this variable to the output of find enemy unit. Let's remove the code that makes the turret spin in circles. I'm going to paste in some code. If the unit exists, I'm going to get the direction normal that points from the turret to its target unit. Let's also get the angle between that direction and the direction that the turret is currently pointing toward. If the absolute value of angle to target is greater than zero, then the turret isn't pointing towards the unit. The maximum angle that the unit can move this frame is then calculated. If it's larger than the angle to the unit, then the turret's angle will just be set to the angle that points towards the direction of the unit. Otherwise, the turret's angle will be updated so it's slightly closer to the unit. Let's run the game and see what happens. Okay, very nice. The turret is now able to find a target and point towards it. It's also able to constantly find new targets. It may be somewhat hard to see right now, but it always targets the closest enemy unit in range. I think it would be much better if it picked a target enemy unit and then kept pointing towards it until it either goes out of range or is removed from the game. This means that I'm going to add some code that checks if the unit target pointer has expired and only finds a new enemy unit if that's the case. I'm also going to add a little bit more code that checks to see if the current target enemy unit has been found, but is no longer alive, or is out of weapon range. And if so, then it resets unit target. Let's run the game and see what happens. Okay, when an enemy unit gets close to the turret, it becomes the turret's target. It keeps targeting that enemy unit until it's removed from the game, and then it finds a new target. Let's also check the other situation where the unit goes out of range. It finds a target enemy unit, and then when it gets too far away, it gets a new one. Very nice. The next step is to allow them to shoot projectiles that move towards enemy units. However, 
This is a good place to stop for this video, and I'll start working on that in the next one. All the source code is available on my website, link is in the description. I've also got a bunch of other games, code, and tutorials on my channel and website, as well as a course where I create a Falling Sand platformer game 100% from scratch. Feel free to check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.